So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Carlo, and I'm here to share my experience on uh, making an indie game while working for a game dev company. So um, now we all know that there are two types of game developers. Uh, there's the professional game developer. Uh, basically, they're the ones who uh, work for companies and they, um, they trade their expertise and time for a monthly paycheck. Here on the right is uh, the indie game developer, and they are the ones who work on their games, uh, who work on their own ideas, in the hopes of getting, uh, of hitting it big, so that they could be able to make more games in the future and maybe uh, buy an extra monitor. <laughs> I did not thought that it was just. Uh, anyways, <clears throat> so you could consider me as a combination of both. Uh, a hybrid, if you may. I don't know if that's an official term, I'm just calling it that. Um, I work at a um, medium-sized company in the Philippines uh, as a professional uh, programmer. And after my day job, I then go home and work on my independent video game. And with this, oh wait, uh, with this, you could easily see that with this setup, I get the best of both worlds. Uh, being a professional has given me uh, a lot, has given me unique experiences and lessons that I could only get from, be, uh, from working at a company. Plus, there's the monthly income that I could use to buy whatever it is that I need or want. Being a, an independent, on the other hand, has given me the chance to exercise my creative freedom. And I can, I can have full control over my work, which is uh, sometimes I don't have the luxury of doing when working for someone else. Now, as you can see, by combining the two of them, you could easily see that things has been really great. I mean, there, there's two advantages, but to be honest, the journey was not easy. So uh, to continue our story, um, let's go back to the year 2013. This was the time when uh, indie games were really getting, re really reaching its popularity. 2012 was the was the big boom, and 2013 was still continuing. People, uh, developers were continually making independent video games, and a lot of professionals are actually thinking of well jumping on the independent bandwagon, and one of those people was me, and uh, and. Yes, I was up at the point in my career where I was considering whether I should, should I continue on being a professional game developer or should I take the blue pill and just um, be an independent? It was, of course, a difficult decision because as I've mentioned before, both of them have their own advantages. But then I thought, why, why not just do them both, right? I mean. It's just so simple, it was, it's so obvious. And I wondered why, why aren't a lot of people doing it? It was only later that I would find out why. So, so that's what I did. I, uh, I talked to my, my, my bosses. Uh, hi boss, he, he's actually here. <laughs> I talked to my bosses and I, I, and I uh, and during the contract signing, I told them that I wanted to um, to continue working for them, but give them, uh, but give me the chance to work on my own independent game. And uh, surprisingly enough, they were really okay with it, with the given condition that uh, it should not affect my day job. So with that, what I did was, yes, I I started making games, and. Um, uh, just small independent games, small hobby games, nothing big. And it was my, my entry at a game jam that I found something that I really wanted to make full time. And it's a puzzle game, and it got a lot of feedback from Ludum Dari. And people really saw its potential, and this spurred me to actually assemble a team so we could make it into a full commercial game. Now, the difference between this game and the previous games that I made is that those are just prototypes, small games just that can be done in just one week. This one is different. This one is something that can be done from scratch 
to something that people would pay good money for. And this is where all the problems started. For one, I just realized that 24 hours in a day really isn't enough, especially if you're doing this, both of these full time. Let's say I have an eight hour job. I have, I give around one hour of, um, of each for my meals, that's breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I have a two hour commute, then an eight hours of sleep. That leaves me with around what? Three hours of independent time. Now, we are all developers, and we know that three hours in a day, that's, that's not enough. I mean, especially if you want to work on something uh, on, a, on a commercial game. Um, especially, of course, if you want to finish it in just a few months. One solution to that is, well, we could always cut off some time from our, uh, our lunch, uh, our meals. You know, just eat it, as, eat, as, eat as fast as you can. Or, or continue doing it further, 15 minutes. Yeah, you could actually do that, stuff it all in. And that would leave us with around five hours. But then again, uh, still not enough. So the next obvious solution is, well, cut off some from our sleeping time. <laughs> but of course, that's, that has the obvious effect that it would really, um, you won't have enough energy by the end of the day. Oh, that's not me. <laughs> so how about weekends? Well, I teach classes every Saturday, so that's the same, uh, that's the same schedule as my weekday schedule, so no. Um, only Sundays do I get to work on the game full time. And, but, and, and that's a big but, if and only if I have the energy left for the, from the week, right? I mean, I've been doing five hours of sleep and it's, it, it was only natural for me to have no more energy by the time Sunday comes. And I'm, I guess it's also important to note that I'm in a committed relationship. To those who are, you know what I'm talking about, right? right? If you want it to last, you need to spend more time together. Guys, there's, there's no, there's, you have no choice. There's no going around it. You need, to do, you need to make it work. You need to spend time. And that means that the all-important seven-hour time that I have is left, is cut off to the all-important girlfriend time. Hello, hello, dear, hello. <laughs> She's here, of course. Um, so as you can see, that the biggest downside to being a hybrid game developer is that there really isn't enough time for you to work on all of them. And because I'm spending all my free time doing my independent game, I have no more time to, do, to go out and do other stuff and even play games. Imagine a developer who doesn't play games. Plus, I was... I was pushing myself so hard to, to finish the game that I was running out of energy as time goes along. And it was only a matter of time before it actually affected my day job. Uh, this was my, my wake up call. I thought to myself, if I can't make this work, then why do this nonsense at all? I mean, just stick to one, right? So, but then, I, but then I realized that something needed to change. And um, I realized that I cannot have both of them full time. It's just not physically possible. If you're a human being, no, you can't really do it. If you can rewind time, then maybe. Um, and in order for me to do that, I need to limit my scope. I need to make sure that uh, I set a, uh, a scope that I can achieve. Sometimes it, being a developer, you can't really, you feel that, no, I want to make it something that's really good. But of course, you need to understand if, there, if you're going down that route, you don't have the luxury to work on something as big and as something as complex. Another thing is um, extend deadlines. Um, 
have a deadline that, that has enough breathing room so that, of course, you could have your own free time. So give yourself a break. I also realized that something needed to be done with my relationship. And no, I'm not gonna ditch my girlfriend because of this, and she's definitely gonna kill me. But um, I made sure to, to talk to her. I, I, I wanted to make her understand that if ever I wanted to make all of this work, we need to meet halfway. And that's where the relationship agreement was born. Uh, basically, she'll leave me alone, uh, do my own stuff, she'll do the chores for me, but with the given condition that I better be darn sure that I finish the game, and I should, uh, we should watch all of her favorite TV shows together every mealtime. So with that relationship agreement in place and with the change in his lifestyle, I can easily say that things have become much, much smoother, much more bearable, I guess. It's funny because looking back, if you think about it now, you could easily see now that the problems were just really simple. The, um, and the, uh, the solutions were pretty obvious. Why did I ever um, do it? And you must understand that I was so very focused on making it work, making the hybrid thing work, what I want to prove to the world that I can do it, that I did not notice that I was running myself through the ground. And of course, thankfully, after nine long months, my game is finally at the point where it's almost finished. And I'm proud to say that it's now part of the, um, and I'm proud to say that, that my hard work was not in vain. So, so yes, um, so that was my story. While there is more that I, I wanted to share to you guys, I'm afraid I cannot fit them all into a 20-minute talk. So if ever you're thinking of going down this route, let's say you're working for a company and you, you, you're thinking of doing the hybrid route, then here are some, some tips that I could give you. Uh, one is be sure to check your contract for non-compete clauses. So what's this? Well, basically, it states it's it's something in your contract that states that you cannot work on some uh, you cannot work on anything or a, a game that would directly or indirectly uh, conflict with the uh, with the what with what your company is is doing. And even if if there is such a thing in your contract, you could always ask them. Uh, there are a number of developers who have already tried this, and uh, to be honest, it's just that when it comes to contract, sometimes it's already written down. They just they just use a a a, a, a format. So be sure to talk to your to your employers if ever um, you find a non-compete clause in your contracts. Number two, if possible. Work with a team. I know that some of us want to, we want to go all gung ho and say and, and work on it alone, but you would notice that you already have not enough. You don't have enough time, and you want to you want to have team members to help you out. And it would only make things faster. Then um, another tip is work on what really motivates you. This is something that it's obvious, but sometimes when we're working on something, we don't notice that we're not enjoying anymore. So be sure to, to think about it and see if, if what you're working on now is something that you really want to work on. You don't want to waste your, all of those free time to work on something that eventually uh, you're just gonna leave. You're just not going to finish. And to tie with that, get feedback early. Make sure that people play your game early. You want to make sure that it is something that people will play. Uh, that people will play. You, don't want it, you don't want to work on all of those time just to, re just to find out that it's something that people don't, uh, won't, 
won't play at all. Manage your time effectively. This goes without saying, but I bet there are a lot of developers out there who doesn't do this. Of course, we have the luxury, some of us have the luxury of producers and they are the ones who, who do this for us, right? Why do we have to do this? But if we're gonna go down this route, you need to understand that this is very important. You need to keep track of everything. And you don't have to do all of those big spreadsheets with all the priorities and stuff. Just, just stick with a very simple system. Even just um, listing down all the tasks even just adding priorities and simple deadlines, that would go a long way. Those simple systems can help you out big time. And finally, always leave time for yourself. And um, I guess it, it, it goes without saying that sometimes we, we are really passionate about making games. I, I, I am, and I believe that uh, I was foolish enough to believe that if ever I push myself so hard and no, I don't want to take a rest, I don't want to do other stuff, I just want to finish it. And people aren't really gonna care how long it took you to make the game. They're not gonna, they're not gonna check the, the app store and gonna say, wait, let me see what, how long did it take to, to finish this. No, they're not gonna, that, that's not, that, that won't matter at all. So. Um, I was actually, for the past few weeks, I've been thinking of how to end this talk. Um, and I guess the main reason why I, I wanted to give this, and when I was given the chance to give a talk and I, I told them I wanted to share uh, my experiences because there are a lot of people, whenever I tell them that I'm working for a game dev company and I'm working my independent game, they'll be like, <gasps> How are you able to do that? They're like, it's, I mean, people are like uh, always wondering how if ever I'm, I'm, I was able to, uh, how, I able, uh, how I am able to juggle everything. And uh, yeah, so that's the reason why I'm sharing this because I wanted, if ever you guys are thinking of doing it, at least here um, I could, I have shared my, my, my lessons, the lessons that I've learned, so that you won't have to uh, make the same mistakes that I did. So, uh, thank you very much. I'm Carlo from Accidental Rebel Games. Um, you could check out my game at booth six, um, 1060. Thank you. All for Q&A. Thank you, Carlo.